problems. The control panel is playing up, whether it's the photo cell or the door panel, we've got a four flashing code, which is telling us that something's blocking it, but there's nothing blocking it. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is go through how to check the control unit, how to do some basic checks on the wiring, and how to check the photo cells. And obviously, if all of that's okay, then how to replace the control unit. Let's crack on. This light is flashing like this. So generally, when you've got the four light flash, that means that there's something blocking the photo cell. Now this is your photo cell. These are all very much of a muchness between all the different manufacturers. And what you've got, when something breaks the beam that's going across from here, reflecting off the reflector on the other side, it will trigger the control unit to stop. These are only powered with three wires. You've got a positive, a negative, and a switch. All it's doing, when this is clear, it's putting a 12 volt feed down the switch wire. So when your photo cell <coughs> is faulty or the, the control panel thinks it's faulty, that there's something blocking the door, you can force an override by pressing and holding the button for five seconds, then the door will close. Now, obviously, when the photo cell's working, it doesn't affect the opening of the door. So the door will always open, but it won't come down because it thinks something's blocking, something's in the way. But if you keep your finger on it and hold it for five seconds, the door will start to drop. Obviously, if the door does come down, you know the motor is absolutely fine. If your motor doesn't override, I have got another video to show how to replace the motor. I'll put the link in the description at the end. What are we looking for when we're testing this unit? Obviously, the first things, You've got the first three pins there offer an extra light if you want it to power up the garage light when you operate the door. So we're going to leave those ones clear for now. This is your mains feed in. So you've got neutral, live and earth. Neutral, live and earth. That's what those three do. So we're looking for obviously 240 volts across those two pins with it all connected up. We've then got the motor control wires. Obviously when you press the button, the relay clicks, you hear that working, you will get a feed down to the motor. You've got neutral, live, live, depending on which way the motor is going to rotate. So you'd always get, if you put your meter across that pin and one of those two pins, depending on which way the door's going, you will get 240 volts on an up and down phase. So that's how you would check the motor. Your photo cell is like we've said, this is all this side of the board is all 12 volts. This side is 240 volts. This side is on the 12 volt circuit. So the actual control panel works on 12 volts through this transformer unit. This reduces it down from 240 volts to 12 volts. So this side, like I say, we've got 12 volts across those two pins. That means that your photo cell has got power to work. When the door's clear, the photo cell will put 12 volts down its signal wire to S1, S2 when that's linked up. So we're looking for 12 volts through the photo cell back to S2. If that's okay, the motor should work. Then this side is for the phasing of the of the unit for doing your resets and stuff. And obviously the other thing to check is we've got two fuses internally here. There we go. What we can do is check continuity across those. So with the power switched off, we just turn this round to ohms on there. I can turn the beeper on on this as well. So we know when we've got content. And if I go across the fuses, that one's okay. That one's okay. If they were blown, you'd get nothing. First thing first, we need to get it up to AC voltage, which is there with the wavy line on it. So the first test we're doing, we're looking for mains voltage. So we've got the mains there. We're going across the blue and the brown, so from there to there, to that one there. There you go, 235 volts. We know we've got power into the board. Motor control, we can check the output on that. We've got earth, and then we've got power out of these three. We've got two, two lives and a neutral. So depending on which way it's gonna go, 
Don't know if, if I operate the door. Yeah, but just make sure you move the camera out of the way of the door you before you do it. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I took the camera away. Through that one, and when it's going down, you get 240 volts through this one. And the circuit is between the neutral, and then they become positive either way, depending on which way it's up or down. And this side, then, this is now. We're on DC volts on this side. So we click that across to the next, the, the volt with the straight and the dodgy line under the, the serrated line underneath it. And then we can check for voltage over here. Like we said with the photo cell, we've got, we're looking for 12 volts across the two pins there. There we go. There's this 12 volts DC. When the door is clear, all the photo cell is doing is putting a link in between positive S1 and then the link is obviously we put the link in there to S2 so that is basically what the photo so when it's when it's clear and in operation that is what this this control panel wants to see it wants to see 12 volt positive to S1 and S2 if you're unsure you can put a link in like I've just done there and that will eliminate the photo cell from the equation so the other one is the reset procedure when you've when you've checked your photo cell and you know everything is okay to reset this control panel what you have to do is crack off the link there between stop and com we pull that link out move it left one into com and imp So it's going into COM and impulse. I do apologise for some of this camera work. That's why I've tried to show you on the circuit board as well because it's quite hard to see what I'm doing here. I'm going to do it back up again. Okay. Turn the power back on. And we should have a slow flash on the thing that we've got a slow flash now. And then we power down now. Move that link back to the second position. Like so. And then doing back up again. And that is how you reset this board. Put it back to start and com. And the power back on and as you can see the faults exactly the same it's still flashing which now we know we've checked everything else the control panel itself is faulty and we're going to need to put this new board in so ordered the board you can either change the complete control unit or you can just get a new board it's far cheaper to do it this way so let's swap it over so first of all we're going to go for the main power feed we switch the power off at the switch uh, we're going to loosen these little terminals off so we've got neutral live earth from the mains into the board and we've got the motor controls so that's the earth to the motor controls and then we've got the feed and the neutral which will get all those in as well it's not a bad job like I saying if you do it one wire at a time you can't go wrong you know you're not going to mix them up we've got the light control and the little button control at the top there we've whipped those off and then we've just uh, disconnected the photo cell wires we've got the four screws that mount the PCB to the actual control box now the difference in price for me to replace that whole unit was 220 pound if I just replaced the PCB 75 pound so a big difference. Here's the new one going in. So again, we've swapped over the bits and bobs on the uh, main side. 
we'll just connect that and screw that to the control panel and then we can just connect the last few wires up to it and then obviously we've got to reprogram the remotes to the board if you replace the complete control panel you can go on eBay Amazon and find yourself a new control door panel for about 45 pound but you obviously get new controllers um, if you need more controllers you have gotta buy them as well so for me this was a far easier way of doing it and I can still use my original remotes because we've got quite a few of them we'll just put the aerial in there and then we can connect the little light on the top of this control panel back up again so that's going to work we'll put as link wise in this is for the photo cell so I'm disabling the photo cell and I'm actually bypassing it with these links and I'll tell you the reason for that in a minute I'll put a little bit at the end happy days look up she goes watch my camera again I don't want to trap that again in the door and down it comes so last but not least we're just going to tidy up those photo cell wires because I'm not going to reconnect that I'm going to leave that bypassed we just took them in down the bottom out of the way one, so two. here we go to reprogram these remotes you hold the button for five seconds till it flashes you press the remote button you want to program to it it flashes once you do any others that you want to do just keep pressing them all the ones you want to link to it every time you press one it flashes it's logged it so I've got loads of them, got loads of remotes and then away you go And they're all working super stuff we'll put the cover back on screw that up put the cap on the bottom give it one final try just to make sure that it's uh, fully functional going up and down as it should I mean that's working like a dream now so the main reason I've overridden the door photo cells on on my two doors is that there is a, um, a thermal cutoff in the motor. So if the door jams or it does actually get on something on its way down, the thermal cutoff will trip it and it won't continue. It can't crush you, it's not that strong. It'll just come down and then stop. The thermal cutout will hit and, and that's the end of that. It will then click back in again once the motor's cooled down. Um, the other reason is because on the outside door it's it's in the carport and it gets a lot of damp in there here in the UK we get damp the damp breeze winter time it's a real ball ache because the reflector gets covered in in uh, moisture and then the signal gets deflected and doesn't come back to the photo cell so the amount of times you pull out the door you go to close it it won't close you have to get out you have to wipe it and then it works so no good that is disabled disabled on that so it just works no matter what it's great up and down Jobs are good and in this internal garage when I've got a car in again I'll, I'll, if the cars if the cars sticking half out the garage I want to bring the door down to the top of the garage to keep the heat in and if there's obviously the car in the way the door won't come down so again you've got to be a bit mindful um, if you've got children running about and then the photo stage is probably a necessity but for me I don't need it I, you know use a bit of common sense you control the door yourself you just got to be a bit wary of it so there we go door operational the unit's been repaired we've replaced the board in it everything's as good as gold so really pleased with that if you're having troubles with one of these or a similar control panel at least we know now how to check it how to override it or how to replace it and repair it thanks for watching <laughs> Yeah.